All right, guys. Um, this video is a quick and kind of fun one where we basically take a rendering and like this, um, and we try to fake uh, a water reflection in front of it. Um, so this is what we're working with. Uh, and this will also be in the uh, zip file that contains the materials. This is camera 14, and then this is water texture 06. And um, to kind of give you an idea what we're shooting for, it will look something like this. All right? Okay. So to start out, uh, what you want to do actually is because we kind of need more room on the bottom, right? And so what we're going to do is first uh, unlock this layer, double click on it, you know, whatever. Go to um, image, canvas size. And in here, I want uh, the canvas to expand downwards, right? When I add to the dimension, if you keep it at the default, it will basically you know, give you room on top and bottom. So you want to click on this top arrow, the arrow that's going upwards. So you'll see that it's uh, expand in these directions and uh, do a height of 10 inches instead. So you'll see that it'll give me room below it, right? Which is great. All right. Okay, now I want to duplicate the layer. So right click on that layer, duplicate. And um, let's call this reflect in the sort of duplicate as, call it the reflect layer. All right, once that's done, Control T, it's really simple. And just drag this downwards. So it basically, flips um, more or less like this but you can kind of play with you know roughly where you want your uh, reflection point to be mm. so it's probably a little bit upwards and this doesn't have to be super precise we're not you know trying to it's not a science okay all right so um, after that's done this you actually will want to move it below that image, right? And um, what we're gonna try to do is that we're gonna try to cut this line out. Uh, we're just gonna simplify, right? And basically kind of uh, extend it past so it's a straight line instead of this. And that's just a limitation of this rendering. If you had a kind of straight on shot, then you wouldn't have to really worry about this. Um, but I'm just gonna take the polygonal lasso tool and zoom in a little bit closer the sides here, zoom out, and basically try to get roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect, roughly a straight line like that. Come out and basically, whoops, with the raw with that top layer selected, you know, delete out the road. Okay. And now with the polygon elastic tool again, I'm going to try to uh, duplicate that angle as best as you can. I mean, there are other ways to kind of really do this, but I'm not going to sort of obsess about it too much. And um, since this is a selection, uh, and you don't have the move tool on, you can actually move the selection around. So you can try to match it a little bit. All right. And I am going to deselect the sort of overlapping part with my wand. Basically, I just want to kind of add a sliver here. You don't have to necessarily have to do this exact same way. Uh, this is just me improvising. You can clean that up later if we want to. All right, and then uh, with the eyedropper tool, here, which is the eye, and sort of click on, you know, roughly that gray color. Use a paint bubble tool, fill that in. We'll take care of that 
a little bit later, right? But basically, what you want is that you know, sort of roughly straight line, right? That's an edge, and then below it is what will be the reflection or the water. Okay. All right. Now for the fun part, with the uh, reflect or the water layer selected. And you actually might want to kind of move this so it actually gets to that little corner there, right? Um, it doesn't expose anything. We can recrop this later. Um, go to filter, blur, motion blur right here. Okay. And uh, give this, let's see, a 90 degree angle and make this really long, 100 pixels long, something like that. 100 all right so it's really exaggerated say so, okay so you can see what's happening basically it's blurring it vertically um, and then do it again filter motion blur whoops sorry that will just repeat it filter blur motion blur this time keep the angle to zero so it's horizontal and then do a short one around 15 pixels, so it gets a little bit horizontal. Okay, so now it has two motion blurs on one vertical, one short, one horizontal. And then um, we're going to go to uh, the smudge tool, which is right here, right above the burn and dodge tool. The last one here, the smudge tool, okay? Now with a kind of softer, small brush like that, and not too big. Uh, here around, I would say, 16 to 20 pixels. Something like that, okay? And uh, with your strength set to around 75 or so. So three quarters, Ooh, okay, 75. And then what you wanna do is basically zigzag back and forth so you'll see that this is sort of like you're playing with watercolor right you're smudging the water up a little bit and you just sort of zigzag back and forth uh, to create some of the water ripples it's really fun All right, okay, uh, now remember we can always use kind of the, the, uh, the burn tool uh, to sort of darken the water in the foreground and then you can highlight, use the dodge tool to highlight uh, whatever highlights you sort of want, uh, brighter reflection. So the burn tool, uh, pick a sort of really big, really, really big brush Okay, and uh, basically sort of darken the front part of this really slowly, subtly, maybe not too much, just a little bit, but generally, you know, in this sort of reflections, the, the sort of foreground is a little darker because of the reflection, the uh, reflection angle. And then with the dodge tool, you can basically highlight parts. Let's say, for example, this. Let's uh, Let's actually undo that. There maybe there are parts of the reflection that you. I want to show up a little bit more or get to pop a little bit more then you can kind of do that all right okay so now we're going to basically drop in this water texture there's a little bit of stuff here no, you can ignore it uh, but this actually is a good point to kind of uh, actually reposition this so that part doesn't show up so let's try to do that a little bit and uh, let's crop it 
again so we know roughly where our boundaries are okay with the crop tool control a uh, with actually control a with the and v to move drag and drop drop this in uh, for now we probably want to okay let's take a look and we probably want to scale this down a little bit so control t free transform to sort of make it smaller get the scale roughly right I do not have my I do have my snap on okay uh, so in this case you know this is also perspectival as you'll notice this is a perspective of the water so you know it's the same thing as the grass that we saw earlier uh, you basically kind of want to position it so it roughly gives that sense of you know further away is smaller scale that sort of thing right now this we're actually going eventually going to just insert as an overlay so you don't have to worry too much about it so this layer and just call it overlay if you want to kind of be more organized so go to image adjustments uh, hue saturation and just desaturate it like that okay and uh, with it selected basically you want to change the layer blending to uh, overlay all right with overlay active and then maybe bump down the opacity a little bit to 80% uh, of that. You can sort of, you know, position this, but again, this sort of goes in between on top of the reflect, but below your sort of top layer. And you can kind of move it around a little bit, adjust the sort of water texture, right? But this sort of, this water texture basically kind of gives it a little bit of that sense of realism, right? Okay, now uh, this sort of top layer, you know, obviously you'll kind of want to make an, a water edge like with a curb or something. So I'm just going to completely wing this with whatever. Oh, that's a little bit too big. a tiny selection um, pick that sort of gray color that we had earlier maybe slightly darker whatever green uh, G for the paint bucket and just sort of oops sorry uh, on the top layer and sort of paint that in uh, if it's not dark enough then you can maybe make it darker try that again could go B I mean sure you know it could be better but it sort of serves a purpose to illustrate. Use the clone stamp tool. Um, hold down Alt somewhere, and with a nice brush, mm, nice soft brush, that's decently big. So hold Alt somewhere, and sort of try to kind of smooth out. Whoops, smooth out uh, if you can. May take a couple tries. Sort of smooth out the transition between the two. You know, I'm really rush jobbing this. You can do a much better job if you kind of took your time. Okay, and so yeah, that's more or less it. You can do probably a better edge if you really wanted to get some shadows in there. Um, yeah, play around with get it a little bit natural and even using the burn dodge tool again uh, you know so parts of it get darker etc etc but hey you know these are two different tries and they're they look a little bit different I think this one I got it pushed up further a little bit more but you know that's sort of the principle and it's fun and it's cool um yeah that's it